my band over here. Oh, Holly's over there. Good morning and welcome. Welcome particularly to all our visitors, uh, um, the people who are from the swap shop. It's so good to have you. It's such a special day today, celebrating 25 years at the swap shop. Amazing. Woo! Amazing. And um, I did do a little spin of a few, stint of a few years helping out, so I know it's sort of close to my heart and I know the work and the effort and the labour that have love that's gone into that place and God has really blessed it and thank you so much for your faithfulness. And just to um, open this morning, I want to make a proclamation, a proclamation that um, it, we can see God moving. He's a mighty river and he's moving through all the generations from old to young. And the young and old will turn to Jesus. Fling wide, you heavenly gates, and prepare the way of the risen Lord. Let's stand and make that proclamation. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the Savior. Great way to open 
with that tribute. What a great way to open with that tribute for our celebration service this morning. Um, so I'd like to give a warm welcome to everyone who's here and everyone who's watching online and to our guest speakers today, Jeff and Ruth and their families for coming along. We'd like to welcome you to our church. And we've just got to, if you wanted to have a seat, we've just got a few notices. Sorry, everyone's still standing. Yep. <laughs> um, first of all, we have these beautiful new uh, keepsake cups for our amazing coffee. Uh, so if you are interested in buying a keepsake cup, they are $25. And the money goes towards um, helping buy the beans and blessing our church. And if you would like to donate more than $25, that money goes to... Uh, getting a keepsake cup for someone else as well so we can bless our church by doing that. So if you'd like to get on board, the keepsake cups are there. There is also FPOS, so if you don't have cash, they, we do have FPOS there as well. Um, and we also have our leadership voting forms out today. So uh, if you haven't got one already, see Jude. They are up and out. And there's also a de description of the roles on the back. So if you're unsure what the roles entail, have a read of that. And then um, get your forms in by the 5th of June. So we'll have the little box up to pop them in. Um, on the 23rd of May at 6pm, there is a men's shed night here at the tyre shed. Peter Kowalik uh, will be speaking, so that'll be a great night for the men to come out and have a listen to. So that's the uh, 23rd of May. Uh, the 29th of May, uh, if you are a new member to our church for the last couple of years, uh, you will be getting an invite to a welcome lunch. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, Grant will be giving you an invite and so the pastoral care would like to host you to, for a welcome lunch um, for joining our church. And, sorry, there's a, yep, that's done. And one last very exciting announcement. Uh, I'm going to go to the right one. Sorry. We have had a new baby born into our church. So Amy and Sam have had a little girl, Jordan James, born on Wednesday the 11th of May at 11.31pm. They're all home and they're doing very well. So we would like to just very excitedly welcome a new baby into our church. So, and God is very good. So, yes, thank you. So very exciting news there. So... Yes, so we will now head on into our next um, item, which is a video uh, of our swap shop and what they've been doing. So we've got a celebration video that will come on. and to see people uh, finding the uh, clothes and bric-a-brac and all those sorts of things that we have in the shop and uh, feeling well-dressed and, and happy with their purchases. And uh, that is a real joy for us. And, it's, uh, and to have comments from uh, uh, visitors that come in. Hello, my name's Beth. I've been shopping here for a hundred years. I love shopping here. The ladies do so well. Thank you. Hello. We love shopping at a swap shop. Today we've got all of these things. <laughs> um, it's just a fantastic shop and a good way to use, it's just a really good way to serve the community. How are you? We're going to buy a truck. What I love about the swap shop is God's provision. 
is ongoing and continuous provision which blesses this community. It is humbling to watch him at work and to acknowledge that he has been doing that faithfully for 25 years. Yeah, the swap shop provides an outstanding service to the community. Uh, it provides a base for people to get together and volunteer in a tremendously friendly environment. Um, and sets a standard, I think, um, uh, for the rest of the community to follow. Hi, I'm doing all the toys here, as you see. Nice little toys. Well, mending, a price of wool, so buttons on cards and a price of cards and the new materials. And then yours that pops up. Dealing with people, there's always challenges. There's always people that come in here and even though our clothing is cheap and our bric a brac is cheap, they try to barter you down and say, oh, come on, you know, and, you know, this is too dear or whatever. But that is a challenge to us because we think that uh, what we do here and the prices that we put on are good prices and what we do here is we do it for the Lord, for the community. And uh, so people challenges and uh, um, that's the biggest challenge I think. And I dare say we have to uh, learn to uh, live and work with the volunteers that we work with during the day and I will uh, say that our two say girls that are, and boys are great to work with and then I'm sure the other days find the same.
You'd be pleased to know that Pastor Carl is one of our, our customers. Congratulations, Swap Shop, on 25 years. And we're done, Carl, on the video. Let's put our hands together for Carl with that great video. So we're done, Carl. I'd like to invite Ruth up. She's going to come up here and share a bit of her story with us. Um, there's a mic. And, um, yeah, Ruth's just been, um, yeah, in the community for a little bit. And really encouraged me in faith, just the way that she pursues God and, um, yeah, the way that um, she lives, lives her life. And, um, yeah, she hadn't been around for a few years. We were at a skate park event and all of a sudden this familiar face come walking across from the high school. And I was like, when you know someone but you don't know their name, is always like, hey, how you going? And, um, yeah, found out Ruth Woodruff had come back to Balaclava. So it was amazing and she's been a... A great help down there. So let's get into it, Ruth. So what's your um, what's your favourite food, Ruth? Oh my, oh. my favourite food. Um, that's hard. I didn't actually prep this one. <laughs> that was the last one on the thing. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's hard. Chocolate. Chocolate. That's a good one. Alrighty. So Ruth, um, tell us where you grew up to. All right. So I'm originally from the York Peninsula. I was wasn't born there, but you know I lived there as a little kid. Um, my parents divorced when I was young, so um. My dad and my brother and sister and I, we moved back to Balaclava a couple of years ago. Um, we were still little at this time, so a little kid. And then um, my dad remarried and we moved to Owen. And then, yeah, that's yep. kind of right. How was that for you as a kid going through divorce and stuff? So that was always hard because it was always like a split family, like on like always be like share care and like we were with mum and we were with dad. And yep. Yeah. And um, just... Yeah, it was, like, just hard, I guess. Did you understand that as a kid? Or no, it was, like, I didn't understand what was going on half the time because it was just, like, having two different parents aren't together yep. and then you're trying to live with both of them. Yep. That can be really confusing as a little kid, yeah. Yep, and so how was your dad's influence in your life So I had a really, up? really strong relationship with my dad. Um, best dad ever. It's <laughs> kind of dad that always wanted to, like... He'd always do everything for the kids. Like, the kids were just his life and he would just want to do everything with them and always, you know, be there, school, making food, everything like that. And, um, yeah, he was just a huge, huge role model to me my whole life. So, yeah. So good, Ruth. And so, for you, what happened in 2017 that, that sort of changed things for you? Yeah, so in 2017, um, my dad passed away from losing his battle with bowel cancer. Uh, he was 37, so quite young. Um, he was battling bowel cancer for... A, maybe a year or two, I don't even remember. I was young, but, um, yeah, so that was a really hard kind of point. I was only 11 at the time, so I was young, but I remember a lot a lot of what happened. And, yeah, that was something that definitely changed my life, like, in, in a big way, yeah. yeah. For sure. So so what happened to your family from there? What did you go through? Yeah, so um, that time was like a bit of a blur, to be honest. <laughs> um, me and my brother and sister and my biological brother and sister and I, we ended up moving out with our mum and that was out at Clareway. So we were, no, actually before that we were at Two Wells so we moved a couple of times but we were living with her and we had other little siblings that we just got split up with and um, yeah, so we ended up being full time with my mum and that's where it went from there, yeah. And how was that for you? How were you dealing that with well, that? Well, that was hard because um, why, as growing up I was used to having two different, like uh, being split up from families but then we had become one family and my dad remarried we'd become like a bigger family and then that all crumbled then it was a smaller family again and we all split up so it was just a huge change and I wasn't used to any of it so that took a really long time to get used to and just um it was really, it was really heartbreaking to yeah. be honest yeah sure. sure and so what happened for you as you sort of entered high school and and so forth <laughs> um so starting high school that was that was hard because like I had to start high school without like didn't have my dad there and it was that was a scary thing for me because I always just pictured him, you know, like watching my first day going to high school and like graduating primary school even and he wasn't there for that. So that was really hard. Um, my first couple of years were a bit uh, not the best, like just I wasn't very nice to other people and I hated looking back on it now, I hated the way I treated other people just to, I think I was hurting so I would want other people to hurt and take that on other people and um, just wasn't a very nice friend to be around at that time and yep. Yeah, I just didn't really have a great start to high school. Yep, yeah, yep, for sure, for sure. So, um, you know, your your life's journey, how did that, all the emotions going on and starting high school and, you know, different houses, 
Um, what, were, what were you desiring? What, what, where did you come to a place when you... What were yeah, you, what so um, I was about 15, just like... I had gone through high school a little bit. I was a couple of years down the track and um, I was just like really struggling like with things. I was thinking about my dad a lot and thinking about like... I'm um, just angry about it a lot at that time and I was just angry like... Angry at God? Or? Yeah, I was angry at God. <laughs> yeah. Just like, how could a good God, like how could he take my dad away? Like, why would he do that? Why would he let all this happen? And I was just so angry and trying to like go through high school, like wondering like what I was going to do. I was like, why like did this have to happen? Why now my life's wrecked because of this? And I just didn't see any hope. There was like no no hope to look forward to. I felt like there was just nothing, like nothing there. So I started just getting like like into this path of just being like sad and um, anxious about everything and just questioning everything all the time, being angry and that that would like go out on other people and um, yeah, so I wasn't probably the, not the best version of myself at that time, yeah. So where did this lead you to? How, what did you find that changed your life? Yeah, so I started, oh the biggest question in my head really was just how, I always wondered how my dad could be on his on his deathbed and have and have that much faith in God that he would still believe God was still believe God was good even when he was dying. I would be like, well, how does that? How could that make sense? And you know, I always thought, well, you know what? Like, if he if he could be dying and still had this much this much faith in a, in a big God, then like, I want to see. Like, I want to know about this God. I want to I want to try out this God for myself. <laughs> yeah, I wanted yeah, to get a I, taste. And I, yeah, and I honour <laughs> the man for his faith because I stood with yeah. him. And um, I just know that he's, like, looking down on us today, which is crazy to think that he's in heaven with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, <laughs> the, that everyone's in heaven cheering us on here on earth and saying, come on, let's, let's believe God, let's go for the things that God has, um, has for us. So, so how do you find Christ? How did I find Christ? <laughs> so I was, about fif- I was about 15 at this time. Um, I'm 17 now, so about two years ago. Um, and, yeah, I was in high school at this time. I was, like, I was with my mum. I was up in Clare. And um, some of my relationships were struggling. My friendships were a bit rocky and just not having a great time at school, not really having a great time at home. Um, my home life wasn't that great, you know. Like, it wasn't getting on with my siblings a lot. It wasn't getting on with my mum. Um, I was having family issues with other family and just, yeah, like, a lot of the trauma was kind of, like, weighing on me. And I was like, well, um, if this God is so good, you know, kind of want to see what that's about. So I didn't really even know a lot about it. I didn't kind of like always knew who was introduced to who Jesus was through my dad. He was, like I said before, he was the biggest role model. And I think he introduced Jesus to me a lot growing up. And um, that kind of just stood with me, I reckon. And then, um, yeah, everything that I knew from that, I kind of was like, well, I'm going to I'm going to follow him. I want to I want what he has. So, um, yeah, I made that decision and that, that was really hard because I didn't know what, like, my family was going to think or what my friends were going to think or what would happen to me. Mm. But um, I just knew I wanted to, wanted to make that decision. Yeah, you'd yeah. seen the world and you'd realised mm. there wasn't anything that filled that hole. Yeah. So you thought, well, I'm going to give this God stuff a go. And where do you end up? Do you end up going to church? Or? Yeah, so this is, this is a bit that takes a bit of a <laughs> um, downward spiral. <laughs> so um, I did decide to follow Jesus and um, I knew that it would have set well with my family because they weren't. My dad was a Christian, but um, my mum and my brother and sister who I was living with, they weren't Christians or anything like that. So um, I didn't know how I'd feel about it, but I knew that it wasn't going to go down well. So I was on a walk one day and I was just like, well, this is what I'm doing. And I was like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell them. And I went back and I told him and um, yeah, it didn't end very well. (laughs) So um, I won't go into detail about that, but I ended up moving out a week later. So I was moved out. Um, I didn't really have a plan at that point. I was just with my grandparents um, in Owen and I just was going to school still but I went back to school and that was hard. I sort of had to tell my friends what had happened and they were really confused and didn't really understand. But um, So that was a bit hard. It was hard to trust at that point. I was just like, well, you know, I'm going with this decision. Like everyone's telling me that I'm stupid but, you know, God's saying do this. Like I want you to follow me. So I'm like, yes, God, I'll listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that all happened and I just ended up I was living, didn't know what I was going to do at that point. And then when I decided to formally move out, I moved into Balaclava, where I am now. Um, I live with my auntie and uncle, so my dad's brother and their family. And I'm just, yeah, I just moved in there. And um, as of the church, I just knew a couple of people from Uniting years ago. And um, I reached out to one of them, one of the girls there, and she invited me to Uniting. And so I went one day, I was super nervous and like, it was awesome. I went and I saw so many people that I hadn't seen in like so many years since I was a little. And um, yeah, it was really, really good to be like welcomed back into that environment. I really loved that. And I felt like 
family again. Yeah, that's good. So I had that and then I just so started joining the youth groups and yeah, it was really good. So good, Ruth. You'd, yeah, big part of a big family. And I yeah. think that's what it's cool to hear that your story of going different places, but you've come back to Christ and you've come back to the church and you've found yeah, family yeah. and you've found that fulfillment. So so what's on your heart now for life and, and people? Oh, and well, I have a little verse that I want to share. I'll just get that up. Um, so Philippians Philippians 3, 7, that's just something that I think I've held on to for a long time. I love it. I think so Paul says that um, everything in his life that he once counted as a gain, like you know, the things that the world can offer you, um, he now counts as a loss for the sake of Christ because Christ is just so much better than anything the world has to offer. So um, I think that is just what I look, how I look at life now. I just look at life as in, like, I could have everything I want, but if I don't have Christ, then, you know, it's not it's not worth it, yeah. you know? Yeah, he's yeah. the one that's come and filled that hole yeah, exactly. from that yeah. brokenness, from those years yeah. of, of hurt and, um, and, come and, and come and fulfilled you. So, yeah. Um, Thank you so much for sharing, Ruth. I just wonder if, you, if you're able to just pray, pray for the church here. We're going to close. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Father, I just thank you so much for this church, Lord, and I just thank you that this family is a family that um, the body of Christ is just a family, Lord, and we are your family. And um, just thank you that we can all be here together, Lord, and that you just bring broken people together and that there's nothing that you can't fix. There's nothing that... Um, nothing that you can't restore because in you we are fully redeemed and <clears throat> forgiven and um, called and chosen and there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from you, Lord. I just thank you so much that you just give us that gift of life that when we're broken you just give us life and then there's no turning back from that point because you just give us so much life in abundance, thank Father. It's such a blessing. Father, thank you. And so, Lord, we just thank you for Ruth and thank you for the journey that she's been on. We just pray your blessing and your hand to continue to be on her life. We just pray, Lord, that she'll continue to move in faith and just, and just follow you and that you'd place people in her life to encourage her, to, to stir her and to um, mm. keep her uh, yeah, on track for you, Father God. So we just say, yeah, thank you for her life and her sharing the story with us this morning. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. 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 Let's put our hands together and thank Ruth. Good morning and uh, welcome. In particular, I want to acknowledge our guest speaker, um, Jeff Payne, and Leanne Saunders, that is the Church of Christ president that visited us today. So welcome in, in amongst us. And thank you so much for your testimony. That is wonderful to hear. And uh, thank you for all the visitors that came along. Um, I've got a message from Grant Spannenberg. He said, we're here today is the Swap Shop Silver Anniversary. Anniversary. <laughs> Congratulations. May it be truly spe a special time for you and everybody connected with your original God Bless vision. With love, Grant and Helen. So just a congratulations from Grant and Helen. And um, the Swap Shop, um, like we've seen, this incredible numbers that was punched out over the last 25 years, but most of all, we wouldn't know the impact that the swap shop had on people's life. You know, that, that's what something we cannot measure. So congratulations, and we are so blessed and thankful to have a ministry like the swap shop in our midst. So enjoy the day with us, and I'm going to hand over to the worship team. <clears throat> God is so faithful, isn't he? I'm just going to read from Psalm 89. I will sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. Young and old will hear of your faithfulness. Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. So we're going to just sing of God's faithfulness um, as an acknowledgement uh, today of uh generations, our different generations, we're going to sing some songs that we probably don't sing normally very often, a couple of hymns. So I pray that you enjoy that. Let's stand. Shut 
Please be seated. So the kids go out with Darren today. So there's something wonderful for you at the Sunday school. So if you make your way, that would be fantastic. So it's my privilege now to invite Jeff Payne, our director of CareWorks um, in Adelaide. 
<laughs> I am so excited. I was just looking at the time and I just want to say we've got a luncheon today, so don't look at your watches. We're here and dwell, so sorry for that, Kim. <laughs> Uh, I'll be quick, Carl. There, that's all right. <clears throat> right. So I'm not here to preach, that's for sure. <clears throat> I'll leave that to Jeff. So has everybody got their little pack today? If not, Jude's got one ready for you. So put your hand up and she'll deliver one to you. So all are welcome to have communion this morning with us as we uh, celebrate Jesus. Swap shop sold with a purpose. In Romans 8, 28, we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Wow, 25 years. That's an ama amazing vision of God's blessing and favour. And I am amazed of the amount of clothes, furniture, bric-a-brac that just keeps coming in. That's God's blessing and favour. The years of dedication, the vision and the service that many people have put into the swap shop. And the blessing of the shop that for this community is amazing. It has probably impacted everybody here in some way, shape or form, whether it's large or small. All the products that come in are sold again with a purpose to bless the community and to share God's love. May God bless all the volunteers who give of their time and may God's favour be upon you as you serve this community. In 1 John 3, 17 and 18, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can God's love, the love of God be in that person? Let us not love with words or speech, but with action and in truth. Jesus was a man of action. We are reminded of the many miracles that he did. Healing the sick, healing the blind, the lame, the crippled, diseases, feeding the multitudes, and the list just keeps going on. Everything Jesus did had a purpose. We believe that Jesus is the perfect role model for us today. To follow, to follow and the most important action that Jesus did was that he gave himself as a living sacrifice where he was nailed to the cross, died a brutal death and three days later rose from the grave. Now that is action. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Jesus laid his life down for you. Jesus is calling you his friend today. So as we take communion, I want you to remember Jesus and all that he has done in your life. And we all have ups and downs, and but Jesus is there with you all the way. So I just want you to remember, as you take the bread this morning, this is Jesus' body broken for you. And as we take the wine, this is Jesus' blood poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. So you get yourself ready, and I'll just pray, and then you can take it in your own time. Lord, we just thank you for your life. Thank you that you walked on this earth. Thank you, Father, that all the things that Jesus did on this earth was for a purpose and to show us the way to live, to show us how to care for our community, to show us how to love for each other. And, Father, we thank you, Jesus, for your death, but most importantly, we thank you for coming back to life so that we can have that relationship with our Heavenly Father as well. So, Lord, we just pray you bless this time as we take communion. And, Lord, we just uh, um, lift the swap shop people to you, especially in this time as well. We just thank you for their service. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord, we just pray for a, a blessing upon the uh, the offerings that have been received, Lord, and we just uh, pray that you um, bless it and double it and triple it and uh, that it can do the work of this church into our community and beyond. We just pray these things in and through your name. Amen. Over to you, Carl. No, no, it's Welcome and thank you for coming. Bless you, thank really you. appreciate it. Really, really happy to be here. You have no idea. Um, I wonder if I can have one of the little handheld thingies. Is that possible? <laughs> Cheers for that. That's great. Good morning, everybody. Ah, uh, <clears throat> one of my favourite books, like. Uh, put, assume Bible comes in there at number one, but one of my other favourite books is uh, The Road Less Travelled. And uh, I can remember the first sentence, and I can quote it to you, and I often quote it to people. The first sentence of the book, The Road Less Travelled, reads, Life is difficult. Um, and if, if we had time to go around this room and unpack each one of our lives, we would all at some point be able to talk about the difficulties and the, the hard things that, uh, that are in our lives. And, and I'm no different to that. I have difficult things in my life as well. Um, one thing that isn't difficult is my wife sitting over there, who is the president of Churches of Christ. And part of that role is that uh, she visits churches and uh, sometimes she preaches, which is really good because I get to go with her and then sit in the pew. Um, but that means that we go to lots of different churches these days. And I'm always astounded how so often I end up in just the right church for me that day. And that's my experience today. I am just deeply, deeply moved um, by what's happened here today. And I thank you for that. Uh, wow. Um, 25 years um, in, your, in your swap shop. I haven't introduced myself. Uh, my name's Jeff. Um, I'm the chief executive of um, an organisation called Churches of Christ in South Australia, Northern Territory Community Care. We shorten that down. We call ourselves Care Works. We've got four op shops. Thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> one of them's uh, on the property of a church, like this one used to be. Um, one of them is in partnership with uh, with a church out in the northern suburbs. One of them's on a piece of uh, on a piece of land that used to be a church that's closed down, and um, and we're in there now. In the actually in the old tin shed, looks a bit like this, much smaller, but out the back. Uh, and the other one's you uh, know in a shopping strip down on um, Henley Beach Road in Torrensville. We've got four. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <clears throat> None of them are like the swap shop. And the number of times I've said to the people who manage and lead and volunteer in our op shops, if you want to see how it's done, go to Balaclava. That's the model. That's what we should be aspiring to. So, well done. 25 years. You'd have to mush my four together to come even close uh, to, to what you're achieving and have achieved and this morning you have framed it beautifully and, and you've remained faithful to the vision that it's not about commerce, and, you know, it's, it's not about, well, it is about community and, and, and um, other organisations and things. It is about that, but it's actually about God's ministry. Um, if we do something in a church, we call it a ministry. If we do it in another organisation, we call it a program. Keep calling it a ministry, guys. Uh, this is of God. And... Here's to the next 25 years. Um, I've got one volunteer. She's not with us anymore, but she made it to 35 years just by the way. Here you go. <laughs> Boy, did she get a big bunch of flowers on, uh, on that uh, Christmas when we, um, when we were blessing our uh, people. On the, on the board, it talked about... Um, how many millions? Was it was it three million or eight million items of clothing? Eight million. <laughs> oh, wow. We don't. I, I don't know how you count that. <laughs> Have you got a little clicker at the door? Yeah. <laughs> um, and and the the dollar amount that was has been given to local community organisations. What was that number? 
That's what I thought. And then when I was thinking, I'm going to have to speak to these guys in a minute, surely it wasn't that much. <laughs> Quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, times three. <laughs> hey, I'm under pressure here. I'm, I'm standing out the front talking at you, and, and you can forgive me for that. Um, three quarters of a million dollars. You cannot measure what... Um, did I just walk out of camera? Uh, I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing that for fun. Um, <laughs> uh, you cannot measure... In, there is no way to measure the impact that that has had on people's lives. And, uh, you know, sure, there's lots of organisations that uh, make contributions to the community. That's fine. But you're doing it in the name of Jesus. And there's something qualitatively different about that and something really important about that. And you have no way of measuring how many community organisations out there have received something and they've said, oh, that's the, that's the shop that's attached to the church. And that's fantastic if that is said somewhere. Didn't say there must be a dead spot here somewhere in for this. Uh, what you didn't say is um, how many hundreds, if not thousands, of people came into the shop to buy something, and oh, we're swapping out. Hey, stereo. Okay, we good? Oh, it sounds different. That's good. Um, <clears throat> Where was I up to? You, you can't measure how many people came in and benefited from receiving cheap goods, affordable goods. But at the same time, something was going on beneath the, their skin and somebody had enough time just to say, hey, are you okay? How are you today might have been enough. Uh, we used to, in my organisation, talk about the importance of having a listening ear. Just having the time and the opportunity and paying attention long enough to, uh, to stop and listen to somebody and care for them and help, help them to just find that little spark of hope in, uh, in the day-to-day -day life that they are living. Because life is difficult. And the people who are coming to visit you at the shop are finding that life is difficult. And because there is somewhere that they can find people who care and who love, this is fantastic. So, well done, you guys. Here's to the next 25 years. There's a bit of a debate going on in Jesus' time. Um, the, the people who were the religious elite, they would have arguments about all, all kinds of... Yeah, gotcha. Uh, who, <laughs> they would have all kinds of, uh, of, of arguments and debates about the important stuff in, in religion. And the religious life in those days was huge and weighty, a big burden on people's shoulders. And uh, one of the debates was, uh, which is the most important commandment you know there's 600 odd commandments in the old testament and which one is the most uh, the most important and um, there was a whole a whole um, train of thought uh, that that had a consensus around the answer to that question so jesus is asked rabbi which is the most important and he says the most important is this hero is oh do i have my powerpoint I'm going to need that picture in just a second. You can put it up now if you like. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Dead spot. With all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. You want this camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And uh, when, when that was said, there was, there was nothing surprising to the people when they heard that. There was a whole tradition that said that is the most important, the most important commandment. And in fact, if you read on in uh, Deuteronomy, I won't read it to you now, but if you read on, it says, uh, write these names on your foreheads and, and uh, teach children. I'm going to this one now, okay? I'm going to stop now. Here we go, great. I'll just anchor myself here. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> and he said, in, in Deuteronomy, it says, write these words on your foreheads. Inscribe it on your body. And, and the, the, what, what actually happened is that they got these things that were called phylacteries. 
and they were little boxes, and that's one right there. There's a picture of a phylactery, and they would have a little scroll that was uh, wound up and put in the phylactery, and uh, it had those words, the Lord your God is one God, uh, you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and they would strap them on their arms and strap them on their foreheads. Next slide. There he is, a guy wearing a phylactery on his head. So Orthodox Jews of that day, I don't know what the straps on the arm are. Um, I, I, oh, yeah, there's a box there on the inside of his arm, not the outside. And, uh, and that's called it was the Shema, I think. Um, and that's where that uh, particular command would be put. Um, I love the way he's got his hand like this. It's like, well, what were they thinking when they designed these things? Yeah. Uh, but that's, a, that's an Orthodox person um, expressing. Next slide, we'll get away from him. Um, yeah. So, so far in the story, nothing surprising at all. Jesus has said, yep, that train of thought, that's absolutely right. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. The next thing that he says was earth moving. It, was, it just sent shockwaves through the people who heard. He said, the second one is just like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. Yeah, we'll have. A, I think I put that up there. Yeah. The second part of that is was incredible, and and they they'd heard the first half over and over again, and Jesus said the second one is just like it, and when I hear Jesus saying is just like it, I kind of in my head mash them together, and it says to me, how do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind? And with all your soul and strength. Did I get them in the wrong order? Um, how do you do that? By loving your neighbour as yourself. I think these two things are inseparable. And you people are loving your neighbours in so many ways in Balaclava. And for the last 25 years, one of them has been in a shop front in one of a couple of locations. That's all about loving people. It's all about, therefore, loving God. Theologian Debbie Thomas says, when Jesus was asked what matters most in a life of faith, Jesus doesn't say, believe the right things. He doesn't say, maintain personal and, pure and doctrinal purity. He doesn't say, worship like this or attend a church like that. He doesn't even say, read your Bible or pray every day or preach the gospel to every living creature. He just says love. That's it. The whole gospel in a word. Love. Sometimes I think when you've got a fabulous church like this with beautiful music and, and a great story, Ruth, thanks for that, um, and, and just the wonderful people that are around about you. Um, sometimes I think we get tricked into thinking we come to church and we've done, we've done the gospel, we've, we've done what it is to... No, we haven't. This is God's gift to you, not your, your gift to God. Uh, it's God's gift to me today to be here. When you walk out the doors, you walk into the mission field, you walk into the places, to the schools, to the shops... Uh, to the relationships, to the families, where you have the opportunity to love. You don't even have to like people. We're called to love them. We don't have to approve of their choices. We're just called to love. There was a Jewish teacher walking along a street in Eastern Europe one time. And so the story goes, uh, some 200 years ago, and he heard a cry of a child in distress. So he followed the sound of the, the cry of the, of the child and it found his way into a house where there was a child in insignificant distress in crying. And there in the other part of the house was one of this rabbi's students swaying backwards and forwards in deep devotion and prayer uh, to God. 
the rabbi took the child and held it and calmed it and soothed it and, and rocked the child back to sleep. I'm going to read it. When the student emerged from his prayers, he was shocked and embarrassed to find his master in his house holding his baby. Master, he said, what are you doing? Why are you here? I was walking in the street when I heard crying, he responded. So I fo followed it and found her alone. Master, the student replied, I was so engrossed in my prayers that I didn't even hear her. So very strong was my sacred intention that it blocked out all the rest of the world. My dear student, began the rabbi, if praying makes one deaf to the cries of a child, there is something deeply flawed in that prayer. It is not even really a prayer at all. So I want to say on the back of that, to you, my friends, if our religious devotion and our Bible studies and our programs and our groups do not make us alert to the cries of the broken, the disadvantaged, the hurting and the marginalised, then there is something deeply flawed in our practice of faith. I'm going to pray with you and finish up. Our God of love, we thank you and praise you for your unfailing and unending love. For the words that have been captured in the songs that we've sung today, we give you our heartfelt praise. Lord, when we fail to recognise and live out your call to love, we apologise and we repent and we commit ourselves afresh to caring for the people around about us and within us who are broken, distressed, marginalised and hurting. Help us to live our faith. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for the timely reminder about God first and others second. It's, it's important to remember. Thank you. Um, the last song we're going to sing today is a bit of a funny story with the cho choosing it because I said to Sharon, oh, I want to do To God Be the Glory. And she said, well, which one? And um, so I sang her um, the chorus and she goes, well, that, we worked out that's actually not, it's not called To God Be the Glory. It's called My Tribute. And my tribute is a song I remember from when I was a little girl, when we were at the Balaclava Church, I mean, um, sorry, uh, Hampstead Gardens Church of Christ. So it's a long time ago, um, but it's an amazing um, song that brings back amazing memories, but it also is very honouring of God and giving him the glory. Um, and I didn't even realise there was a verse to it. Well, it was actually a couple of verses. We only ever sang the chorus. So the verse, verse is very challenging, so we're going to sing that for you, or try to. <laughs> and we're going to have you stand in, um, in a second and join in the chorus with us, please. So please stand. <laughs>
prayer just is that you go about your week, that you remember how much God loves you and each day putting him first. Amen. Um, don't forget, we have coffee and we have um, lunch here. Sausage sizzle. So um, you are all welcome to join us in a luncheon now. And we're just going to do a prayer. And they are ready for us. So, Father God, thank you in the name of Jesus. Bless this food to our bodies. Thank you for a church family that can celebrate and join together. Bless our fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen.